I reached this position in the second round of the World Under-16 Championship in Duisburg, Germany in 1992. My opponent's name is Steinhoff. He's a Dragon Sicilian specialist, and this position was reached out of a Dragon Sicilian. I have the white pieces, and truth be told, this is a rather typical Dragon moment. White is up the exchange, black has a big attack. White also has a potential big attack. He's threatening rook takes c2, winning my queen. It's my move. I can decide whether to give up a little material and play defensively with like c3 or queen takes b4, or I can try to play a move like bishop takes f6 or queen h6 and to run ahead and counterattack. I have to make the decision what to do. He has a big attack. So do I. White to move. How do you play? Here I made the decision after a long calculation to meet his challenge head on. Now, notice I said after a long calculation. We shouldn't just play haphazardly. We shouldn't just make the decision, okay, he's attacking me, I'm going to go after him too. We have to find the right moves. Being a little bit dispassionate is important. we got to play with a clear head. I played bishop takes f6. He took back with e takes f6. Turns out that in this position, the complications after rook takes c2 would end up in a forced draw. After queen takes c2, bishop takes c2, rook takes h7, a very strong move, threatening mate on h8, if he takes an h7, then I win after rook h1 check, followed by rook h8, mate. He plays e takes f6, and then after I play rook d to h1, threatening mate in 2 after rook h8, king takes g7, rook 1 to h7, mate. His only defense is the very strong move g5. Of course, queen g5 check doesn't do anything. I can just take on c2. I'll easily get out of the checks, and then black's in big trouble. But after g5, I have no more than perpetual check. If I take on c2, then he can take on a3, then play queen e2 check, pick off my pawns. I don't want to do that. And after rook h8 check, king takes g7, rook 1 to h7 check, king g6. There's no way for me to continue my attack. All I can do is go back and forth, and it's a forced draw. This was his last chance. My opponent played e takes f6, and here I had another critical decision. White to move. What would you do? Once again, we can choose to play defensively, or we can calculate precisely and go for it. The most straightforward move for white is queen h6, threatening mate on h7. But of course, the question which we have to answer is after rook takes c2 and all the complications, can white get out of checks or not? What do you think? Take your time, really try to figure it out. This is a moment when we have to have poise under fire. My opponent had an attack and I had to figure out if it was a good attack or just a bluff. Maybe not a conscious bluff, of course. He might be wrong about his evaluation. It's important to always know that your opponent can be wrong, too. I calculated deeply and decided to play queen h6. After rook takes c2 check, king b1. The crucial line to calculate is rook takes b2 check. Of course, he has to keep on checking me or else I'll mate him next move. After rook takes b2 check, king takes b2. What should black play now? He has two possibilities. One is queen e5 check. One is b takes a3. Before playing queen h6, I calculated them both out very deeply. He played queen e5 check, so let's look at b takes a3 first. If he had tried b takes a3, the line goes like this. I would take on a3. Now again, remember, all I have to do is get out of checks for one move, and then I win the game with queen takes h7 mate. He would play queen a4 check, checking me and defending his bishop. King b2, queen a2 check. King c3, Queen c2 check. Now, what do you do with white? Always keep in mind, we have to be careful. I have two rooks for a bishop here. He's on the verge of mate, but he's chasing my king. I can't go into this type of position without being very, very sure that I'm okay. But if you practice your tactics, and you trust in yourself, and you look into the position very deeply, usually if you think you'll be all right, you will be. But you have to work hard. Here I have two choices, king d4 or king b4. Which one do you prefer? King b4 allows him to draw by force. Black to move, do you see it? He can play a5 check. Now, of course, king a3 would be a blunder because of queen a2 mate. And after king takes a5, he plays queen c5 check. I play king a6, queen c6 check. And if king a7, queen c7 check, he can just follow my king everywhere. There's no way for me to get out, and it's a forced draw. Notice, of course, that in this position, if he tries bishop c4 check, king b7, there's no way for him to actually play for a win here. It's drawn. So king b4 would be a mistake as he can force a draw after a5. King d4 was the critical one that I had to calculate. After queen f2 check, now my queen can come back to the defense. All I need to do now is stop the checks because I'm up so much material. 
After queen e3, his best try is queen b2 check, queen c3, queen f2 check, king d3, queen takes f3 check, king d2, and now he should play bishop takes d1. Notice, of course, that he's running out of checks. If he had tried queen f4, then after queen e3, there are no more left. But bishop takes d1 is a very good move, because if I take on f3, then he takes back, and I'm up in exchange, but he's up a lot of pawns, and that's good for black. So now I would take back on d1, and after queen g2 check, king c1, king takes g7. It's an unclear position. Of course, white is better, but black has good compensation, because he has six pawns to my two, which means he's up four pawns, and I have a rook. A totally bizarre position. I want to take on d6, but of course it's dangerous, because I have to look out for checks that eventually pick off my rook. And he can also take on e4 and g4. So my plan to try to convert this position would be to try to use my queen and rook to pin down his queen to the defense of the f6 pawn, and then to try to take his pawns. White is better, but black has good compensation. This was black's best try. Once again, I want you to take into account the feeling of the game, the emotion of the game. Think of what was at stake. This was the world championship. We were both 15 or 16 years old. Everything was on the line. And look at the position. It's completely crazy. I'm one move from checkmate. He's chasing my king all across the board. It's very, very hard in such situations to calculate as purely as you would if you were sitting in your living room looking at a tactics book. What I want you to think about is whether or not you do, in fact, play better when there's less pressure. Or maybe you play better when there's more pressure. That would be great. What are the moments that throw you off? If you observe those moments and work on them, your weaknesses will become your strengths. In this game, all the pressure was there, and I had the presence to think with kind of a cold-blooded calculation. I worked everything out, and I found that his attack didn't work. The next couple games, you'll see when it went the other way. We all have our ups and downs. But let's finish this one. After king takes b2, we just analyzed b takes a3. We saw that whole variation would end in a position where he had six pawns to my two, and I'd be up a rook. A wild game, but white was still better. Here, he played queen e5 check. Take a moment now, calculate things out. Can I get out of it or no? Of course, the obvious move for white is to play king takes b3. Is that what you had in mind? Think deeply. Are you sure? My real options here are king takes b3 and king b1. King c1 loses to queen c3 check, king b1, queen c2 check, and after king a1, queen a2 is just mate. So look at the position anew. Think about it. You want to win with the white pieces. You're up a lot of material. Do you take on b3, or do you go back to b1? I played the very strong move king b1, which after a number of moves gets out of check by force. Let's look at why I didn't take on b3. Remember, you have to calculate calmly and clearly in the critical moments. After king takes b3, what would you play with black? Try to find the perpetual check. The key move is first queen c3 check. Now, of course, if I go to a2, then I'm losing after b3 check. King b1, queen c2, king a1, queen a2 mate. So after queen c3 check, I have to go to a4. Now what does black do? Yet another time, the obvious move loses. If queen a3 check, then after king b5, I can use his pawns to shield me from his checks, and white wins. There are no checks with the queen, and after a6, king b6, my queen covers the e3 square, he has no more checks, and mate is next. White wins. Black to move here. Calculate things out. Do you see the draw? The key is to play queen c2 check. Black wants to sacrifice even more material. He can force me to take his pawn on b4 to open up the lines. And now do you see the very strong move? Queen c5 is the most obvious once again, but this would be a big mistake, because now white can play king b3, work his king slowly but surely over to the king's side, and use the pawns, queen, and rooks to cover up the checks. The key move for black is a5 enticing my king away from my defenses. And now it's a forced draw. If I play king takes a5, then just queen c5 check. And there's no way for me to escape the side of the board. He follows me. King a4, queen c4. Boom, 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 boom. There's no way for me to get out of checks. It's a forced draw. And declining the sacrifice doesn't help either. After king b5, queen c5 check. There's no way for me to get away. If king a4, queen c4. And if king a6, queen c6. If I take the pawn, it goes back to the last variation. Black draws. Taking his bishop would have been a big mistake. It was key that when I played queen h6 a few moves ago, for me to see that in this position I had to play king b1, declining his peace sacrifice. But there's much more. Bishop c2 check. This is the key idea for black. Trying desperately to get me to take the piece. 
Again, if I play king takes c2, it's a forced draw. Queen c3 check boxes my king in, in a similar way to the last variation, except this time I'm on my back rank as opposed to the flank. King b1, queen b3 check, and he follows my king all over the place. Draw. The key after bishop c2 check is to decline the sacrifice again, and once more use his pieces to block his checking files. I play king c1. His bishop is in the way, so queen c3 check is no longer an option. Now after he plays queen a1 check, I played simply king d2, once more not taking on c2 because of queen c3 check. This is a pretty unusual device, keeping the opponent's pieces on the board to get in his own way, but it might be useful sometime, keep it in mind. After queen d4 check, I played king e2, and I'm sure now you're feeling that it's pretty much over. My king is escaping to the shelter of my own pawns. I don't have to use his pieces anymore. And he resigned here. There's no way to continue. After queen c4 check, I simply played king f2. Queen c5 check, king g2 wraps things up. If he takes my rook, I can simply take back. I'm up so much material. The rook will win the game. And I'm always going to go back to h1 once I'm safe and made him on h7. So in this position, he saw that there were no more checks that he'd run out, and he resigned. So from this example, you can see the cold-blooded calculation is often the best response to a dangerous-looking attack. If I would have gotten the sweats and my heart would have been pounding, I wouldn't have been able to see the light through the trees. Keep this in mind. If you feel nervous, take a deep breath. You might even get up and wash your face in the bathroom. You have to approach even the most difficult chess positions with a clear head.